It's GameCube Index, and this is Role Playing Beyond Imagination. At this point in 2002, the Nintendo GameCube was coming up short in one particular area. While the shells were drowning in driving and sports games, particularly soccer, we had yet to receive a proper RPG title. While we've looked at a couple of titles that may have roused some feelings of the RPG, let's face it, Mystic Heroes was a Dynasty Warriors hack and slash, and Lost Kingdoms was a card-based action title. So when Ubisoft announced that it was bringing two Dreamcast titles together in the form of a combo pack, players were understandably excited to play Evolution Worlds. While they now have a large RPG history on portable devices, North American players at the time probably knew developer Sting Entertainment best for the Jetsons' Invasion of the Planet Pirates for the Super Nintendo. In Japan, they had an established catalog of vertical shooters and boxing games, and their first foray into role-playing games was with Treasure Hunter G, the last title Square published for a Nintendo platform before jumping ship to PlayStation in 1996. They went on to release Solid Runner and Baroque before releasing Evolution The World of Sacred Device and Evolution 2 Far Off Promise for the Sega Dreamcast in 1999. Evolution Worlds is both of the Evolution titles merged together onto one disc as the first game ends on a cliffhanger. The story is set in the year 930 and centers on a young man named Mag Launcher and his companion Linear Cannon as they adventure through ancient ruins in search of treasure using tools known as Psyframes. The main goal is to search for the fabled Evolutia Psyframe, something that everyone else, even the Prince, is actively searching for. Game progression is handled in the form of dungeon crawling, which is kind of interesting at first as they are randomly generated. The issue is that sometimes the staircase you need to find deep inside the dungeon could be one or two hallways away from the entrance, taking the wind out of your sails just a bit. You'll want to be in dungeons as much as possible to fight battles in order to gain experience points and level up your characters and psyframes. Combat is turn-based against a variety of different monsters, and it's not that much different than other turn-based RPG systems. In between dungeons, you will visit different towns and interact with various NPCs, and you're able to recruit new party members along the way, each with their own abilities and psyframes. It's up to you to manage your party as you see fit, as you can only bring three party members into a dungeon at one time. The games were streamlined a bit when ported over to the GameCube, most notably in the case of the first title. Voice acting was only included in the original release of the second game, and even then it was only in Japanese, so this time around both titles got complete English voiceover work. Due to data size limitations, Sting abbreviated the first title and turned much of the game into cutscenes, leaving in all of the story content but taking out almost all of the dungeon crawling. As such, the entire Evolution Worlds package starts out slowly and takes a lot of time to get going. Another cut feature was with the Linear Watch, which utilized the obviously absent Dreamcast VMU. This wasn't much of a loss, as the Linear Watch was essentially just a Tamagotchi. Players could download a copy of Linear Cannon onto the VMU and watch her do different animations depending on the time of day. There wasn't much interaction, and it didn't add anything to the console version of Evolution 2, so its absence in Evolution Worlds was not one that caused any type of controversy. This would be the last entry of the Evolution franchise, as Sting Entertainment would go on to work almost exclusively on handheld RPG series, including Knights in the Nightmare, Dokapon, and Gungnir. Evolution Worlds received mostly mixed reviews from critics, as the gameplay was deemed somewhat stale and didn't do anything to really change the RPG genre. I enjoyed it for what it was, an edited port of a small, somewhat obscure and cheesy RPG. It definitely has its own personality, and some of the visual style gags landed really well with me. While it didn't shake up how we play RPG titles today, and it didn't really leave a big mark in history, it was a nice trip while it lasted. That is it for this week's episode of GameCube Index. If you enjoy the videos every week, consider backing us on Patreon. Even $1 a month will do a lot to support the project and help improve the experience. It's entirely up to you. Either way, please continue to show your support by subscribing, sharing, following along on Twitter at GC Index, and at GCIndex.com. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time when we go for the knockout in Ultimate Fighting Championship Throwdown.